spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, 20 kilometers over our head, and use that to stop the planet warming up. The example many people cite was when uh, the Mount Pinatubo volcano uh, exploded and uh, all of this ash went into the air and had a cooling effect on the earth and so people have long proposed since the mid-60s that you could artificially add dust to the stratosphere and cool the planet not that this would be a good solution for global warming it would not but it does show the way we're steadily developing the powers to manipulate the planet with comparative ease that sulfur in the lower atmosphere is masking some of the climate warming from co2 so is this the global dimming or something yeah like uh, their leading idea is basically to emulate what big volcanoes do, put material in the stratosphere to reflect sunlight. So the problem is the following. If you add SO2 to the stratosphere, SO2 doesn't condense. So you might want to put alumina in. Alumina has a very high nice refraction. It's very small. It doesn't coagulate. And you can engineer particles have particular properties. You can get them out of the stratosphere. You can concentrate particles near the poles. Costs are so cheap that the richest people on the planet could perhaps afford to buy an ice age. It's extraordinarily cheap. I knew it was cheap when I found that they were quoting me in tons. It's also true that particles, as they get bigger, fall out a lot faster. We sort of step back and then, okay, well, how would you actually make particles in the stratosphere? This is really engineering now. If it was aerosols in the stratosphere, it would likely be put there by airplanes. Start with a fleet of just two or three kind of modified business jets. The basic idea is that if you let a plume off in an aircraft by just changing some little details, you can actually get much smaller particles out of the situations by doing this kind of spraying. So there are all sorts of side effects. I'll get to them in a second. But, but if you put sulfuric gas in the stratosphere, for example, you could deplete stratospheric ozone. Smaller size means more surface area, uh, uh, but more surface area means less ozone. Well, is this stuff in the stratosphere going to be killing some number of people that are going to be a so sort of just, sacrifice? It, it's, a, it's an obvious concern. If it kills a million people, it's we're only bad. doing 1% more, we're just killing 10,000 more people. You could do math. Okay. But that's, so, so killing people is not the objective here. So if I made a decision, or if there was a collective decision, to do a geoengineering program, and you put, say, uh, the kind of program I think makes more sense, we put about a million tons a year in, but let's say, you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. And so the only thing that we can do to cool the planet, or that society can do to cool the planet, is deploy these sorts of technologies. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard, it's more like free riding on our grandkids. And it means there are going to be winners and losers, just like there are winners and losers for CO2, but there are different winners and losers. So this makes the problem, if anything, harder to solve. You've introduced another dimension of complexity into the managing the planet's climate.